everyone, Terry Vincent here with Stormwind.com and today while teaching Route I got asked a very interesting question and that question was could I illustrate how we can use MPLS to be able to provide layer 2 adjacency between devices that are connected via the MPLS cloud. Now obviously I'm teaching Route so these particular topics fall kindly, kind of slightly outside the area but still it was definitely a topic that we were talking about because I mean as you can see here in the presentation we're talking about the use of layer 2 and layer 3 MPLS VPNs to be able to afford connectivity between our devices and it's through this connectivity that we have the ability to be able to set up certain circumstances. For instance, being able to configure IP adjacency through the cloud with the cloud being transparent and also layer two reachability or layer two adjacency through the cloud. Now when I'm saying the cloud, I'm talking about the service provider cloud, which is typically going to be running an underlying IGP and for an example, in the scenario that I'm putting together, it's going to be OSPF. And we're also going to typically be running MPLS on top of that. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you guys an illustration of exactly how this works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a service provider cloud that's going to be emulated on R1, R2, and R3. Now, there's already a routing protocol running here. For instance, it's going to be OSPF. Let me drag this down just a little bit. And what we'll do is show IP OSPF neighbors. You will notice that R1 has a neighbor relationship with R2 and R3, and we are learning prefixes. Show IP route OSPF. We have prefixes for the loopbacks of R2 and R3. As an example, let's make certain that we have reachability. So if I were to ping 2.2.2 .2 and source my output from my own loopback, I should have reachability, which I do. We can see here I have all my ICMP echo replies are coming back and let's go ahead and just test it also for the loopback interface of 3.3.3. Now this is significant because we're going to be relying on these particular loopback interfaces to be able to provide transport connectivity for MPLS to run. So what's going to happen is, is we're going to type a few commands on the routers and next thing we know we're going to have a working MPLS environment. That MPLS environment is going to use a series of TCP connections between R1, R2, R1, and R3 in order to be able to create an MPLS environment. So it's really simple to do, even though it's not inside the scope of route, but it's still something I want to illustrate because we can then use that to talk about what we were talking about with regard to the presentation. So here we go. What I'll do is I'm going to go to R1 and I'm going to enable MPLS at the global configuration. I'm going to say MPLS IP. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to FAL1, and I'm going to enable it there. I'm going to go to Fast Ethernet FAL1, uh, sorry, OO, and then I'm going to go to FAL1, and I'm going to enable it there. That's pretty much all there is to it with regard to setting it up. Now, the issue here is, is that we're going to go first to R2, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this a little bit so that we can get R2 into the picture because I want to look at the specific interfaces that we're going to be using. We need to enable MPLS on the interface pointing back toward our central device here, R1. R1 is not on the edge. So our devices that are on the edge, we're going to refer to as our provider edge devices. So R3 and R2 are going to be provider edge devices. And our device that's in the cloud, R1, is going to be referred to as a provider router. So it's not going to be doing anything except providing services to the MPLS cloud. So what we want to do is we want to enable MPLS on the interface and at the global configuration such that we can form an LDP neighbor. Very simple to do. All we'll have to do is just go under, first of all, the global configuration and type MPLS IP. Then we need to go to the correct interface, Fast Ethernet 01, and do the same thing. MPLS IP. And if I got my sums right, we should form a neighbor relationship with R1. As you can see, right now we have one. This is telling us that our label distribution protocol neighbor is up, so we formed part of our MPLS cloud. The next part to this is for us to go to R3 and repeat that process. We'll go to R3 under the global configuration and type in MPLS IP. Now we'll go to the proper interface, Fast Ethernet 00, and do the same command. And again, if we did it correctly, we should get a neighbor relationship up with one. So what we've done right now is, is we've discussed the fact that we have the underlying IGPs, it's OSPF, and now we've taken MPLS commands and we've built our MPLS infrastructure that we're going to use 
to be able to send information across the service provider cloud. Now I only have three routers in this particular topology. I could have hundreds. The point is, all we have to do is ensure that we have MPLS interconnectivity. I mean, again, this isn't an actual MPLS topic, but again, we're going to be using MPLS for this idea of providing this notion of Ethernet over MPLS capability. So let's take a look at exactly what is involved in that particular element, but first let's talk about what we can't do. What I want to, you to understand is, is if I go over to R5 and look at the interface, show interface FAO1, actually we'll do show run interface. I just want to look at the configuration. Notice it has an IP address, 10.1.200.5. Now, when we look at R4, R4 has an, another IP address that's in the same subnet. So here we'll do show run interface FAO0. Now notice we're in the same network, but we should not have or we do not have reachability. So if I go ping 10.1.200.4, what's going to end up happening? Oh, I ping my own address. Let's ping 5. And we have no reachability across the cloud. So what we need to do is we need to address that. How do we provide that type of reachability? Well, it's going to be, again, using commands on the PE devices on the provider devi provider edge devices, R2 and R3, and it's a simple single command that we can enter. What we'll do is let's go over to R2 and execute it there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to execute this command on the interface facing our customer devices. So on R2, it's going to be under the interface fast ethernet 0, 0. What we're going to do is we're going to use the xconnect command, and I need to tell it, first of all, who I want to connect to. So what is going to be the address of my peer? We're using our loopback interfaces, and I want to talk to R3. So that particular interface ID is going to be 3.3.3.3. So simple enough. Let's go ahead and make that happen. So xconnect 3.3.3. Now, there's more to this. We need to choose a virtual circuit ID. Now, I picked 200 as the VLAN for this, so all I'm going to do is just pick that arbitrarily. It could be 1, it could be 10, it could be anything. And then the last command is going to be encapsulation. But what are we going to be encapsulating? Well, we have a choice. We can do layer 2 tunneling protocol across a layer 3, or we can do MPLS, and that's what we're going to do, MPLS. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit from here. And I want to take this exact same command, do show history. I'm going to copy it out. And what I'm going to do is when I'm going to go under the other interface on R3 and repeat that command. However, bear in mind, I have to change the peer. So here what we're going to do is we're going to go to interface FAL1 because it's the one facing the customer. So config T, interface FAO1. And now I want to repeat that command. I'm just going to copy and paste, but I need to change the address because from 3, I want to peer with 2. So we'll just merely come over here and say 2.2.2. .2. Now, the moment I do this, it may take a little while for things to come up, but I should form a relationship such that I'm connected to R2. How do I know that I'm connected? Well, let's take a look at this. Let's do show. MP, MPLS LDP neighbors and see what it says with regard to my neighbor statements. Let me magnify this and make it a little bit bigger. Notice I have two peerings. I'm peered with two and I'm peered with one. The, the main element that I want you to realize here is, is that I'm peered with two now by virtue of the fact that I have created this layer two style tunnel. How do we see the specifics for that? Very simple. Show MPLS layer 2 transport specify the VC the virtual circuit and then I can either hit 0 I'm sorry I can either hit the number of the virtual circuit or I can hit enter or I can even type detail what I want to see right here is is exactly what we're noticing right here notice now my tunnel state is up now if I want to see the specifics of that I can go up here and say detail and notice now what we've got is we're actually receiving and sending packets. Let's go over to R8, I mean, sorry, R4. Show IP interface brief, E assigned. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ping 10.1.200.5. And let's do a repeat count of 100. Notice now we can ping. We're able to ping because we're tra actually traversing the cloud that we built. So now what happens is that we now have that layer two adjacency that we were talking about that's so important for our routing protocols. Because remember, routing protocols like EIGRP and OSPF employ multicast using linked local addresses. Specifically, these linked local addresses do not get routed inside of our infrastructure. Therefore, they're stuck on a particular layer two or layer three segment. That's one of the reasons that this type of technology is very, very important. So just to illustrate that point, now that we've got everything up and operational between the two devices, let's see if we can create an actual EIGRP peering between the two devices in question. So what we'll do is we'll go to, our, well, we'll stay here on R4, config T, router, EIGRP 100. I'm just going to arbitrarily create that. I'm going to say no auto summary. And I'm going to say advertise every prefix we have. So network 0000 to, actually we'll just leave it at that. And now let's go over to our device located at R3. Not R3, it's R5. So I'm on R4, so let's go over to R5. And do the same thing. Config T, router, EIGRP, 100, no auto, network, advertise every prefix. Now, if we got our sums right, we should get an actual adjacency. And we have. That, is, that adjacency tells us now that we have a neighbor's relationship forming between R2 and R, I'm sorry, between <clears throat> R5 and R4 through the cloud that we created. Let's take a look at what happens when we do a trace route and see exactly what it looks like the packets or what path the packets take. So for instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here on R5 and I'm going to ping, I'm sorry, trace route, 10, 1, 200, 4. I'm going to source it from my loopback zero interface just because I can. Notice it only traverses one hop and yet inside of our infrastructure we have three devices between R4 and R5. So this gives us a perfect example of how we can employ MPLS in its many flavors, there are other ways to do this. For instance, we could have done a layer 3 VPN, which is a little bit more complicated to configure. And we'll actually do that when we cover or after we finish in covering the concepts of BGP and redistribution, because there are a few fundamental elements we need to have under a belt before we do that. But at layer 2, it's very, very simple. You guys have just seen how easy it is to configure Ethernet over MPLS. Continue sending me your questions. I appreciate all of your feedback, and it's been wonderful having each and every one of you as students. Have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you again in another vlog.